Hello everyone. So super glad that you are all here speaking it into existence because I know you all are busy. You have jobs. You have businesses. Some of you have a job and a business. Some of you have kids, which means you have a job and kids. You have uh, a business and kids. You have a job, a business and kids. So I understand life is life and right now life is busy. I get it. But for those of you that have not met me, I am Karina Calhoun. I'm a life and a business strategist, and I focus on helping introverted women really thrive in their life and in their business. Now, whether you are new or regular, I just regular here, I just want to welcome you. And I want to tell you that you don't necessarily have to be an introvert, but I do cater to introverts because I myself am an introvert been one for over 50 years is all I'll say over 50 years won't give the exact number anyway don't forget that I'm here every Tuesday at 3 15 p.m. Eastern Standard for these free trainings okay now I want to talk to you about this particular topic so I recently conducted a poll actually it was last month I conducted a poll here in the community and 26% of the people that responded said and indicated that selling was the top topic that they wanted to dive into because that was the most challenging aspect of their business right now. So our theme for August has been empowered selling for us introverts. Empowered selling for us introverts. And so today we're gonna really dive into how to create that authentic sales pitch. And if you were not here last week, go back and watch last week's training because we talked about how to really shift your mindset from sales to enrollment, but still, we still use the word sales, okay? And at the end of the day, we're gonna look at pitch and how we're gonna, how we're gonna maneuver into that. Now, the one thing I want you to keep in mind, if you watch last week's training you're going to actually see that the sales pitch is not really a pitch okay so watch last week's training actually watch last week and the week before watch all all of august you can you can really if you think about it you could actually I'm trying to think how long they were you could you could actually you could watch all of them back to back you really could. You really could. You really could. Nonetheless, I know that sales can sometimes be intimidating, especially when you're trying to be genuine and you don't want to be pushy. And for us introverts, that's us 100%. We want to be authentic. We don't want to feel pushy. We don't want to be pushy. We don't want people to be pushy with us. We don't want to be pushy with others. So... I'm going to walk us through this step by step, which again, go back and watch the previous videos for this month because they're all focused on different aspects of selling. Okay, so we're going to break down really the pitch aspect of sales just so that it feels more manageable. And I'm going to share a few examples to show you how it works. So before we get started into the steps, I want to talk about why authenticity is so important. And I have talked about this, I probably talk about this on a weekly basis, authenticity in anything that we do. So it would make sense that we would talk about it within sales as well. And the reason why, the main reason why is because at the end of the day, people can tell when a pitch is fake and when it's rehearsed and that can be an instant turnoff. So if it's, if it's feeling fake and rehearsed to your ideal client when they get on that call, guess what happens? That means it's going to be an instant turnoff and you've lost them before you've even had a chance to really get them to sign, to do that consultation, whatever the case may be. But when you're authentic, it builds trust. It creates connection. It makes your offering more relatable. 
is not just about selling a product or service. It's about communicating in a way that feels real, authentic, and genuine. Okay? So whether you're watching live or the replay, I want to I want to pause here just for a second. I want you to drop a thumbs up if you ever felt nervous about your sales pitch and how it how it's going to feel delivering that sales pitch. So I want you to drop a thumbs up if you felt nervous about it. Some people don't. Some people don't feel nervous. They're just like I just don't want to do it. But some people don't feel nervous. So I want to I want to gauge kind of gauge the room and I want to see that. So whether you're watching the replay or you're watching live, let me know with a thumbs up if you felt nervous about delivering your pitch. So, and I can come back to that. But I want to get into the step by step to creating your authentic sales pitch. And to me that really sounds like an oxymoron, but it we're going to work it out. We're going to work it out. So, the first thing you need to do is really understand who you're talking to. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar? Do I say that a lot? So in other words, you got to know your audience. You got to know your audience. This is step one. You have to know your audience. Who is your ideal client? Who is your ideal client? What are their biggest challenges and their biggest goals? The more you know about them, the better you can tailor any conversation you have with them. You can tailor it to what their needs are. So you see, when I talk about knowing your authenticity, knowing that authenticity, really dialing into your authentic your, your audience, it's really knowing who they are. Nakia says, thumbs up, but for planned pitches, spontaneous pitches feel much easier. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Sometimes they do feel much easier because it's coming from the heart. That's, that's why they're coming from the heart. You know exactly what you're going to say. You know how you're going to say it. Not that, and I shouldn't say you know exactly what you're, what you're going to say, but it comes from the heart and you know that when you're having that authentic conversation, they're going to get it and you're going to get it. That's why it, those, I agree. If it's spontaneous, it for me, it's much, much easier as well. If I have to sit and rehearse something and think about it and, and all of that stuff, that to me, that's like, that can be a nightmare. It can be a nightmare simply because I want to, I want to connect with that individual. I already know what my services are. I already know what my products are. I already know who it can help and who it cannot help. So, and I, and I say this all the time, the sales conversation is inevitable in the conversations. It's inevitable. In the evolution of that uh, relationship, that sales conversation is inevitable. Therefore, if it's inevitable, then you should be able to have that conversation because you've gone along in a very systematic way, authentic but systematic way. So, again, the first step is knowing your audience. And this goes beyond, you know, I've had clients that have said, well, I know my audience. And so then when I ask them about their audience, the response is a very superficial knowing. It's a very top layered knowing. It's not the deep, you know, like you haven't gotten into the recesses of your ideal client's heart and mind, which means you know what makes them tick. You know what is causing them to um, hit this speed bump. You know exactly what's going on, even if they don't know, because you have learned them. Okay? So, Again, the first step is knowing your ideal audience. So how can we, how can I make this practical for you? Because I want to make sure you all get this. I want to make this practical. Think about your ideal client for a minute. Think about your ideal client for a minute. What are they struggling with? What are they hoping to achieve? Jot these down because this is going to begin to guide your sales conversation. 
when you know this off the back of your hand, like the other side of your hand, and you're having that natural progression conversation, which leads to a sales conversation, an enrollment conversation. Remember last week we talked about it stops becoming a sales conversation and moves into an enrollment conversation. But that's because you know them. You know them. So an example could be, let's see, imagine you're offering some type of coaching program for busy working moms. You know they're juggling a lot, right? Like, like I said, you're, you know, you could be an entrepreneur and a nine to fiver and a mom with school age kids. Okay. So your pitch might start off with, I know your time. I know, well, let's see. I know time for you is your most valuable resource and you don't have a lot of, lot of it to spare, but I can show you a way to get more done in less time. So you see, that could, I think that would be good. That speaks directly to their situation, which is time, okay? They, they're they juggling time. So the last thing they need is for your program to come and add more to their calendar when really they need you to show them how to get more done in less time. So that's how you're gonna navigate that conversation. That's how you're going to navigate that conversation. You're going to speak directly to their situation. Okay? So the second thing is, you're going to start with a strong opening. Okay? Something that's going to grab their attention. You want to start off really right away to get them going through what their situation is. And then ultimately leading them, natural progression, leading them to the valuable offer that you have. So what you want to do is get them talking. So a practical step would be to, to ask them a question, a really bold question or even a bold statement that's going to make them think, okay, you know what, this lady really gets me. She understands. So asking questions can really be a, a great benefit. Like you could say, you could say something like, what if you could get back 10 hours a week just by streamlining your admin duties? What if you get back 10 hours per week just by streamlining your admin duties? That's something that's definitely going to get their attention if they if they're already backed up for time, right? So I kind of want to pause here for a second. And I just want to see how things are going again, whether you're watching the live or you're watching the replay, doesn't matter. On a scale of one to 10, how confident are you? How confident are you when it comes to starting that sales pitch? Drop it in the comments. One to 10, one being, mm -mm, nope, Karina can't do it. 10 being, Girl, I got this. So drop that in the comments. Drop that in the comments. So I want to move on because we've got a lot to cover. The third thing is grab their attention. This is this, the third step. Grab their attention. And the way you do, that is, do this is to really clearly articulate the problem that they're facing. In other words, you want to speak back to them what they've said. Again, and I say this all the time, I talk about this all the time, that's going to require active listening. You want to speak their language, speak your ideal client's language. This is going to show that you understand, excuse me, their challenge and this sets you up as the person that can solve it. It sets you up as the person that can solve it. You want to be specific about the problem. Use that language. Okay? Because the, the more it resonates with them, the better that connection. The better that connection. So if, if you were, like, say, for instance, you were um, a financial coach. Okay? A money coach. You might say something like, 
managing money can feel overwhelming, especially when you're trying to balance it with everything else that's going on in your life. And it's easy to feel lost in those numbers and those decisions. Listen, that would hit home. That would hit home. Nakia says a four. Gotcha. Gotcha. We need to get you up. We need to get you up. We need to get you up. So this is going to speak directly to what they're feeling. Okay. This is going to speak directly to what they're feeling. Then number four, you want to present your solution. But listen, make sure they have had enough time to talk about themselves. You want to make sure you know and understand their problem. That's when you begin to present, maybe introduce and present your solution to them. This is going to be step four, okay? This is where you're going to explain how this service can help them. You're going to focus on the benefits. You don't want to focus on the bells and the whistles, the, you know, how you're going to do it, but focus on the benefits that they're going to get. Connect your solution directly to their problem, okay? That's the description that you want to give. You want to make it clear that it's going to improve their life or their business. For instance, if you were talking about that financial coaching, you would say, you know, you're going to learn how to manage your money confidently. We're going to work together to create a budget that works for you to eliminate debt. Maybe it's going to, you're going to, it's going to help you start saving for the future. And this is going to be with personalized support along the way. People want to know that you're going to hold their hand. They're not, that you're not just going to drop them. You're not going to drop them. Okay. So then the fifth thing is social proof. It's all about showing them that other people have benefited from what you have to offer. It builds that credibility and it really reassures that potential client that your solution is working, that it will work, that it's going to benefit them. They need to, and we talk about this all the time, they need to buy into you. They need to buy into your product or your service. They need to buy into themselves. If any one of those three is lacking, then that, that's not going to be a good fit. And they will probably not buy. Okay? So when you are showing that social proof, it's going to build that credibility. It's going to reassure them that, you know, listen, this works. This is it. So you want to share that testimonial, share those stories. You want to use examples of clients who have seen results. You can say something like one of my clients, if you have clients who don't want to be named, which I understand, you know, in the majority of my coaching uh, programs that I've been in, I didn't want, I didn't want to use my name, not because I was fearful or scared or I've never wanted to be. I've never wanted my name and all of that stuff out there. I'll gladly do you a testimonial, but I'll just put like my initials or something like that. I've done testimonials where I've used my real name or I've done a video testimonial. But for the most part, yeah. So you can use a testimonial and just use their initials. You can say something like one of my clients with a similar situation, if you don't want to get into the nitty gritty details, you say one of my clients with a similar situation who was feeling overwhelmed with debt became, you know, I don't know if you would say debt free in three months or six months or nine months, however long it took, you know, just be truthful with it. Maybe say she's paid off some credit cards. She started an emergency fund, something like that. Something that relates to what it is. They, something that's going to spark them to say, you know what, that's exactly what I need in my life. And then the sixth thing is you want to have, you want to wrap it up really with a bow is what I like to call it. And that's a clear call to action. You want to wrap it up with a bow. All right. What do you want them to do next? Is it a, a consultation that you want them to schedule? Do you want them to sign up for a trial period? Do you want them to make a purchase? You want to make it sure. You want to make it straightforward. You want to make it easy for them to follow through. Okay. You want to be confident and direct in your ask and don't shrink back when you say that number. Okay. When you say that number, because that number should scare you just a teeny weensy bit. You should be like, whoa, this is a lot. And I know I'm worth it. And I'm going to say it. 
I'm going to sit up straight, head held high, and I'm going to say it. And that's that. And you're going to guide them to the next step. You're going to be matter of fact. That's how you're going to do with that ask. You can say something like, if you're ready to take control of your finances, let's set up a free consultation. And in that consultation, we're going to go ahead and get you, we're going to get your game plan together. And then we're going to go ahead and get you to sign your uh, coaching agreement. Okay. Very simple. So this was step by step. And, you know, I, I recognize that this was simplified, but I wanted to give you the meat of those six steps that can really help you. So I want to just tell you really quickly the six steps that we that we've covered, which are um, really getting to know your audience inside and out. Get to know them inside and out. Start with a strong opening that grabs their attention. You want to clearly articulate the problem that your client is facing. You want to present your solution in a way that speaks to their needs. Okay, I just want to pause here for a second because I want to emphasize this. Present your solution in a way that speaks to their needs, not in a way in a way that sells your product. It's not about you selling your product. It's not about how amazing your product is. It's not a, it's not a, it's not about how amazing your system is. It's not about how you took six months to work on this particular product, the service, your coaching program. It's not about how much research you've put into it. It's not about how much, it's not about how much you, it's not about you, it's not about your program. It's, it's just not that, okay? It is about how your solution speaks to their needs. You wanna you wanna play up the benefits that they're getting, okay? And then you wanna use that social proof, which remember was number five, and then number six, you wanna put it all in a bow. You wanna close with a clear, confident call to action. You wanna sit up straight, hold your head up, and say that ask. You wanna say that ask with confidence. Because you know that this is the solution that that client needs. And if they have not yet committed to getting a solution, if they are solution aware, but they're not yet solution aware, solution, if they're not, prob if, if they are problem aware, but they are not problem aware solution seeking, then that just means a little bit more nurturing needs to be done. Not a problem. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the solution. That means they know that they have a problem, but they have not quite settled it within themselves that they're ready for a solution. They're still quite comfortable in that problem that they have. And until they get tired of running around in circles, trying to make it work on their own, then they are only problem aware. Once they stop and say, you know what? I need to get off of this merry-go-round and I need to get that solution. Until they get to that point, they're not ready. But that's not a reflection on you. It's not a reflection on your services. It's not a reflection on your product. It is a reflection on them not being ready yet. Okay? So I also wanted to give you just a few action steps and I normally don't do this, but I really wanted to be able to do this in this particular training today. Now you all know I'm a special, I'm a, I'm a uh, strategist, but I'm also a coach, so I love homework. So what I want you to do next is number one, I want you to spend some time refining your understanding of your ideal client. The more you know about them, the better your pitch is going to be. Okay. The second thing is, I want you to play around with a few different opening lines and see which which one feels more authentic to you, okay? What feels more authentic to you that's going to connect you with your ideal client? It has to be something that feels authentic to you, 
but connects with them. And then the third thing is start gathering those testimonials or those stories that you can highlight your solution with that has helped other people, okay? Um, now, before we wrap up, I do want to let you know if you're looking for more guidance, you're looking for more strategies and tips, be sure to grab my resource page. It's going, listen, it's got everything I've got going on in one place. So you can grab my resource page and this is a page that really lets you see everything that I have going on. So if you have any questions about anything, let me know and I'm just going to quickly go through what's on there. So the 21 day business connection catalyst, we're still really in the thick of that. Today is Tuesday. So we've got probably about, I don't know how many more days we've got. We're done on the second, but you can register and start at any point in time. Okay. And then we've also got the introverted entrepreneurs visibility breakthrough bundle. That's only $7. Check that out. That is a no brainer investment into your business. Listen, you, do, you don't want to miss that. It's a comprehensive bu bundle with visibility tools and strategies. Then there's also my business newsletter that comes out on every Wednesday at 11 AM. That includes my blog, industry trends, more information about my podcast. Uh, there's also a link to the Introvert Women's Society. Uh, this is where you get support and tools and resources from me. You actually get an opportunity to connect with me if you're in the United States. Um, you, you have at office hours is what I like to call it. You can text me during office hours if you have a quick question about something. Karina, I, you know, I have a question about this, this, or this. You can text me and you have access to me. You have a portal where you can see your resources and different things that, and then there's also other benefits that you get from that. Check that out. And then also my roadmap. This is my five-step formula. Uh, this is something that, listen, if you, if you skip any step, then you're probably frustrated. You're probably frustrated. You want to grab this roadmap roadmap it is a free roadmap and it's not just it, it's actually it's in the form I've changed it to to a small ebook and it has an assessment attached to it where you are actually able to find out exactly where you are and then also for those of you who are here in the rise and thrive introvert women's community I've got a link for that if you wanted to send that out there's also a link to my blog and then the other thing I have recently added a faceless content creation pack that's only seven dollars that's over 500 videos posts and uh, reels that you can use if you want to create faceless content there's a lot of melanin content in there so that's for uh, is not just melanin in there but there's a lot in there so that you're able to to find people of, of different colors and then uh, my five day accelerator, you can learn more about that. That is to be determined as far as the next date. And then there's uh, the visibility vault. You can learn more about really boosting your online presence. You can learn more about that. And then finally, my podcast. If you wanted to hear uh, any of the episodes, previous episodes, we release a new podcast every Tuesday at 11 a.m. either 10 or 11 a.m. so on this resource page you can find out anything that's going on with me okay so super thrilled about that we finally got that up and running uh, over the weekend and I love it so I would absolutely love to hear uh, any questions or thoughts that you all may have about today's session anything that's on your mind you can drop those questions in the comments I'm here to help I'm here to support so whether, again, replay or live, it doesn't matter. So uh, I will answer them. And I am super thrilled to have each and every one of you here. I know that, again, it's, it's a different season right now because, again, kids are back, going back to school. Folks are really dialing into those things. So I really appreciate your time. And thanks so much for joining me today. I'm really looking forward to seeing how you all take these strategies and make them your own literally make them all your own so let's get out there and really pitch and um, increase your sales 
uh, in those authentic and genuine ways. So I will talk to you all soon. Bye for now.